What is up y'all? It's your girl Zay here with another video and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how I make LPS clothes. Now I promise y'all after y'all watch this video or well after y'all watch the rest of this video even though I'm pretty sure I wasted 10 minutes with a fucking intro trying to be funny and shit. After y'all watch this video y'all will realize how fucking easy it is for me to make these clothes because I swear to god I get asked this so many times like I'm always asked how do you make clothes these how do you make these jackets they look so nice like y'all I promise y'all it is so unbearably fucking easy it just Mm. I just hope y'all take the knowledge of this video and, you know, make as many pretty clothes as you want to. Ironically enough, I only started making my own clothes because I didn't feel like spending any money on any extra accessories like clothes and skirts and every time I got a lot of accessories, I never got the clothes I wanted. So I just said fuck it and started making my own damn clothes because I was like, it's free and why not? And it could teach me something and, you know, I wanted my LPS characters to look a little bit more humanized and stuff and I wanted them to be less naked if that makes sense. Listen, I know LPS are technically animals but to me and my eyes they are my human characters so it just feels weird seeing them half naked or just even with their ass out like my ass is out and it's like this feels weird where are my pants? So I'm going to show you guys how I make my LPS clothes starting with something as easy as the shirts all the way to the turtlenecks. So first we're going to start off with our shirt and I'm going to use iris for this. It's mainly because like the shirts that I put on like dachshunds usually fit almost every LPS mold except for collies. Collies have a bulkier mold so I'm going to say this for future reference if you're making anything for your collies make them just a tad bit bigger than you would for like dachshunds, great danes, uh, cocker spaniels, and short hairs. And another tip any of these clothes that you make Probably the clothes for the collies can fit on any other LPS aside from the main fives, you know. We're not just making clothes for the main fives, we're just using them as models because, you know, it's convenient or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and get our fabric. I already have like tons of pre-made fabric, so <laughs> one shot of vodka. So we're gonna go ahead and start with something simple. Um, I also prefer you all to use like a stretchy fabric just so like it can extend no matter which LPS you use. I prefer to use stretchy fabric because I feel like it also helps me put it on like different LPS other than the one I'm modeling so it can fit other LPS, you know? So it can work that way. Now for shirts, what I usually do is I usually start off with like a square like this. Um, I could say the same for dresses as well, only for dresses it's just a little bit bigger so it's like this big. I failed math, so I'm not giving you all measurements or anything like that. <laughs> oh, this is supposed to be a tutorial and I'm already sucking. Damn, where's my scissors, bro? So what you're gonna need is the scissors, obviously. And what I usually do uh, to start it all off is I usually cut like a small hole in the middle. Oh, these scissors suck ass, hold on. And then what I usually do is, this is when I start figuring out if this part's going to be the collar or if this part's going to be the collar. And seeing as the square is upwards and the hole is also upwards, I'm going to assume that this part is the collar. But y'all can literally do it like this way as well. Um, if you do it this way though, you'll it'll be a little bit more trickier because uh, you'll have to start shaping it out like a rectangle. So I would... I would suggest that you guys stick with the motion that you're going with and follow the hole upwards and just put the collar here so it won't be too difficult to cut later on. And then what we do here is we go on ahead and cut across. See? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, oh my god, uh, cut across right here. So my line is right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut across. Um, another reason why it's kind of good to use stretchy fabric is because it's easier to cut, um, you know, than most like rough fabric or like fabric for jeans and leggings and stuff like that. It's easier to uh, cut and this is obviously crooked but um, I'm gonna touch it up later. So then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side. I'm going to cut near the uh, my first armhole. Yeah, take it out of context. I'm gonna cut near my first armhole. 
Oh yeah. And now that we've got our base here, I'm going to go on ahead and try it on Iris and see how it looks. So y'all want to know what's kind of cool? I said this part was going to be the color, but, and this is only if you want to, I do this sometimes when I'm making shirts. I just flip it over, especially when I haven't decided whether or not this is going to be a shirt or a dress, or if I just want to switch the collar in general because I don't like the way it's cut. As I said though, this is totally up to uh, you. <laughs> so we're going to go on ahead and put this on Iris. And I usually do this to determine where the other hand should go, like the other armhole where it should go. So yeah, with it being, um, oh God, with it being right here, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, cut the other armhole um what i try to uh usually be careful with i try to be careful where i cut it i don't want to cut it too far to where the point where the shirt will be loose but i don't want it to cut it too close so the shirt will either be too tight fitting or it just won't fit at all so i kind of cut it like in between i want to say right here is pretty good right here yeah right here so we're gonna go ahead and cut it right here and i'm trying my hardest to make sure that it lines everything i play it by eye um because like i said i'm not really good with measurements and i don't even measure my shit to begin with so i'm gonna go ahead and cut it right there wow would you look at that they're actually aligned pretty perfectly you know what it would be for the fucking tutorial that i would get my fucking lines aligned right so we're gonna go ahead and um test out our holes <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, oh, there we go. The shirt is on there perfectly. So now all you have to do is cut off this access, right? Because <laughs> this should look so bad. Now, for cutting off the access bits of the shirt, it really depends on how you want your shirt to look. Um, for me, I usually just base it off how I want to look. Like, for Iris's shirt that she was currently wearing, this is a shirt with a very high collar, so I cut it like this. These are horrible holes, please excuse me. But I cut it like this because I was basing it off how I wanted to stylize Iris's shirt. All in all, um, so that's what you can do. So if you want to have a collar, like a high collar where you can just flip the collar up or just like leave the collar down, I would suggest cutting it, um, somewhere right here i'm gonna show you both versions so you can like use your use this shirt in like multiple ways so i'm gonna cut the access up here hopefully this one isn't crooked <laughs> uh this is gonna take some time y'all a little nice suggestion and another reason why i use um stretchy fabric you can align it with your scissors for a straighter line like this and then just go on ahead and snip across so you could just so it'd be easy as pie. So now we have a bigger collar. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the access near the armholes, <laughs> the sleeves. Let me just say the proper uh, name for it, the sleeves. Now, when it comes to cutting close to the armholes, you... <laughs> Fuck it. When it comes to cutting close to your uh, sleeves, you uh, need to be careful not to cut too close to the sleeve, the, the, the sleeve anus. But if you cut too close, the what's going to happen is that the fabric thread is going to give out and it's just going to leave like... It's just going to be open and that's happened to me a million times when I've made jackets and shit, so uh, please be careful. <laughs>
Um, if you feel the need to, of course, you can always go back and like trim a little bit um, where you need to uh, trim off some access because uh, that's low key what I gotta do. But I kind of don't want to because I kind of like the way this vest looks. So I'm gonna keep it. But you know, if you want to, then you can always trim off the access. If the access is near the collar, then that means you have to cut off a a piece of the collar and make it a little bit more even. But if the access is the sleeves, then of course you gotta cut near the sleeves. Or if the access is near the back, of course, you know. But as I said, you could also make the shirt so you can flip in between like I was just doing. I just did um, the shirt with the collar um, on this side and then the shirt with like the collar popped up. Or I should have just said the collar folded down, but the collar popped up on this side. And that, ladies and germs, is how I make shirts. And once you know how to make shirts the way I do, then making everything else is pretty much easy as fuck. Like for jackets, for example, making jackets is kind of the same way I make like uh, shirts or literally anything else. Um, I just make them in different types of fabric. This is um, one of my jean fabrics. A very stretchy, you know, because we love our stretchy fabric. And this is my leather fabric that I use for like uh, leather jackets and stuff like that which is also kind of stretchy, but not as stretchy as the jean one, so we gotta be careful. I'll show you how to make both though, and how to decorate it however you want to. But you can also use uh, shirts like these for like jackets and everything, just decorate it however you want to and everything. Let me fix my focus so y'all can see. Um, yeah, y'all can also use these as jackets and stuff too, like if you have like double layers and stuff. I do I do not suggest you uh, use the same fabric for like a jacket and a shirt because then it'll look weird and an overlap unless you make it look good, you know? Um, if you do, I'm envious of you. I'm envious. So I'm pretty much going to show you guys how to make the jean jacket first, seeing as it's literally the same method. <laughs> my jackets uh, so now that you have your jackets it's time for boom 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 then it is time to get the decorating my Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys like a trick for how I do like dresses and turtlenecks. 
Um, so first I'm gonna uh, show you where uh, I put the hole for the tail or how I determine how to put the hole for the tail and then I'm gonna show you guys how to make turtlenecks, you know, two in one. Cause like I said, everything that I make is just two in one. Like everything is so easy. I hope this video has been educational and not just me showing my hands and my nails in your face. it a little if you have to cut it a little <laughs> wider <laughs> this channel is not for kids honestly I don't give a fuck who my audience is as long as y'all parents ain't watching this shit but anyways um you probably you pretty much want to <laughs> do the same method <laughs> um do the same method and uh voila you have your ass now for turtlenecks I'm going to um try to use one I've already made. So I'm gonna use Mallory's uh, turtleneck as an example. I'm just gonna show you guys how to put it on. Oh, this is so bad. Hold on. Now for turtlenecks, what I usually do is, I do the same method I do for shirts. You can uh, model your turtleneck however you want to. However, I do suggest that you have one longer piece and one shorter piece. Um, turtlenecks are just like dresses. You can't really like switch in between like shirts and jackets and like pick whichever side um, Because it's obvious that one side is shorter than the other and then um, Unless you want to and let but it then it's gonna be all uneven and just gross and garbage and whatever like like this This really isn't the best example because it's kind of long right here um but you'll see why I made it like a tad bit long but not too long. Because you can obviously tell that this is where the neck's supposed to be because it's long like my penis. So I'm going to go ahead and use Mallory. Hello all of my fans. I'm going to go ahead and use Mallory as um, a model. So for turtlenecks, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, instead of doing it on the side like you would for shirts, like instead of doing it on the back side like that, um, what you do is you have it on the front, so you put it on the front side. Yeah, I'm so good at giving instructions, y'all. This is why I... <laughs> editing tutorials, I hope no one asks me how to edit because <clears throat> we'll be here for two days, two hours at the top. So this is how I stylize my turtlenecks. Um, whether you want to fold the neck part or not is completely up to you. Um, and the reason why I said you have to be careful with how like short this piece is I don't know if I said that I probably didn't and I'm sorry. I'm confusing y'all I'll just name this uh, the most chaotic confusing, but hopefully helpful close tutorial anyways um, Be careful with how short you make this because depending on how short it is you won't be able to wrap it around um, so turtlenecks range about a little bit wider than most shirts and dresses that I create so just um, We don't have measurements here because I hate math if you fucking hate math. Let me hear a hell. Yeah Just be careful, you know and just play it by eye like I said Whatever clothes you make play it by eye because that's literally what I do I just fucking wing it and pray to God it looks good So after you've gone on ahead and basically looped your turtleneck around um around please stop sticking out after you've looped your turtleneck around your LPS this is where you cheat and you get a rubber band and you wrap it around the turtleneck so uh, it basically fits it also really matters how big your turtleneck opening is because if it's too short like if it's past your finger right here um, my nail <laughs> if it's past if it's like past your nail like these are fake nails obviously but if it's past your nail then that's how you know it's too short and you're gonna have to start over from scratch and nobody wants to do that shit and after you struggle for about 20 to 30 minutes uh oh shit my fucking focus I'm sorry y'all here is a lovely little 
turtleneck. And you can complete this look with the jacket if I can fucking find it. Dun, 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 dun. And here she is, Mallory Archer, in her finest couture. A thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And with turtlenecks and dresses, you can also create turtleneck dresses um depending on what color you want to make the turtleneck and then you know have this part it can either be a trench coat or a dress you know it really doesn't matter and that ladies and gentlemen and that ladies gentlemen that is my chaotic ass guide to making clothes. If you have any questions, please, please, please do not be afraid to ask because I probably didn't make any sense in this video and this video is just all over the place. Um, but if you were able to configure what the fuck to do with this fuck ton of fucking confusion ass, confusing ass instructions, then yay! Um, my boyfriend's home, I think. Oh shit, that, yep, he's home. Okay. Bye!